Okay, so welcome to RedCap Data Management Security and Randomization. This is part five, and we're just picking up from where we left off in the previous video. Uh, so if you haven't watched the previous videos, you might want to go and review them so you can see how we got here. And as always, I'll just start by saying we're using RedCap version 8.5.0. So if you're using a different version of RedCap, uh, things might look slightly different to you, but in general, I think all of the same principles should still apply. So in this video, we're going to dive a little deeper into some additional customizations. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at the field comment log and data resolution workflow, and then also some data quality rules. So if we go into additional customizations here, we can scroll down to, uh, where is it? Here it is, uh, the field comment log or data resolution workflow. So these two things uh, are different, or the same in some ways and different in others. Um, but they do kind of use the same underlying guts uh, in terms of how things work in RedCap here. So we can turn that on, and we're going to have to oops, we're going to have to specify whether we want to use the comment log or the resolution workflow. So we can start with the field comment log, and then we have the option here to allow users to edit or delete field comments. And I tend to use the field comment log kind of informally, so I let users uh, edit or delete their comments. And so if we go into the record status dashboard, into one of our data entry forms here, we can see how this looks. And let's go down to diagnosis here. And let's say we wanted to change the diagnosis from schizophrenia to MDD. Now in the previous video, when we made a change, uh, we had the request reason for change feature enabled. And in this case, RedCap would kind of force us to make a change, or sorry, force us to uh, list a reason when we make the change, when we try to save the record. In this case, we're not going to get that force. Uh, however, we do have this little speech bubble here now. And so in this case, the user could go in and say diagnosis was incorrect and comment there. And then we could just go ahead and save the record as normal. Um, so the difference between this and the previous video, there's kind of pros and cons to both. Uh, so in the request reason for change feature, you're basically forcing the user to list a reason every time they change the data but you can really only do it, it's, it's hard to use that feature if you're making changes to multiple fields at the same time. Now conversely, with the field comment log, uh, you can make comments on multiple fields and like comments for each specific field that you need to change, uh, but RedCap is not gonna force you to leave those comments. So there's kind of a trade-off with either feature and you kind of just need to decide um, how you wanna do things. Um, of course, the data history is still here, so uh, you will see when changes were made, and hopefully when you do see a change, you'll see also that a little field comment was left as well. So I mentioned before, I tend to use the field comment log a little more informally um, than the data resolution workflow. And so what I find uh, most useful for the field comment log is um, even before data collection starts. So usually when I design a project, um, I kind of create all of my data entry forms and then I'll set up my user rights and add all of my users. But before we start actually collecting live data, I'll have a little meeting with the data entry people and I'll ask them to go through uh, the project and enter in a, one or two test records. And this kind of serves two purposes. Uh, the first, is I want the data entry people to, to go through the entire project and get a sense of how things work. So to understand how the branching logic works, uh, look at any calculations to make sure they're firing properly, and basically just let them get familiar with how the data collection project works. Because I don't want people to be seeing these things for the first time when they're sitting with the participant. The second reason is that uh, it's really handy to have a second or third pair of eyes go through the project just to look for, you know, errors, like whether they're spelling mistakes or missing fields or whatever. Um, it's nice to have somebody kind of review uh, all of the forms I've created. And so where the field comment log comes in is that I'll say, all right, when you're creating your record, you can just call it something like Steve test. And then when you're going through, and if you notice there's a problem, maybe there's a, you know, let's say I forgot to include an option in race here. I would ask the data entry person to leave a comment and they could say something like you for got to include include whatever x race and then they could kind of just work their way through the entire project and uh, comment things up as they go and so the really handy aspect about this is once they're finished uh, they can kind of just let me know and then I'll go into this link here to the field comment log and I'll get this big list of where all of their comments are 
And so after that, it's really just a matter of me. I can kind of go through these and address them one by one. But usually what I end up doing is exporting this as an Excel file. And then uh, and it's really just this table in Excel. And then I can kind of just use that as a little tracking sheet um, and work my way through all of the corrections I need to make. So I do find it to be a pretty useful workflow to have. And it is kind of something that I do sort of routinely um, with all the projects I design. Um, OK, so maybe let's see how the data resolution workflow uh, compares to this. So I'm going to go back into additional customizations. And this time, I'm going to select data resolution workflow. And you'll see now uh, we actually don't have the option to allow people to um, make changes to their comments. And that's because the data resolution workflow is a kind of a much more robust data tracking, or, or I guess data resolution workflow. Yeah, I guess that's why they call it that. Anyways, uh, so I'm going to say save. And you're going to get this big wall of text here because uh, there are some additional things we need to set up. So I'll just close that for now. Um, but in addition to enabling it here through additional customizations, we actually need to set up some user rights. So I'm just going to go to myself here. And you'll see here now that we have this whole kind of list of options for the data resolution workflow. And they're kind of ranked from you know, no access to maximum access. And so in the case of me, and this is me speaking, I guess, now as like a data auditor or data manager, basically the person who's going to be reviewing the data and running the queries, um, you want to give that person the highest level rights. So you, they want to be able to open, close, and respond to queries. Alternatively, um, you, so you have your data reviewer who's going to want to review the data, and then the, review, the, the reviewer is probably going to want to assign query findings to the data entry people. And so the data entry people rights that you'll want to enable are probably this one, which is respond only to open queries. So this will allow the data entry person to kind of view queries that have been assigned to them and then fix the data accordingly. Um, and there is kind of like a, a gradient of uh, uh, rights here. But I find for me, it's I kind of just use these two. Um, so let's take a look at how this works. Uh, I'm going to save changes. And let's go into the record status dashboard. And once again, we'll go to example demographics. And you'll see here now we still have the little speech bubble uh, from the field comment log. But now the tooltip says view data resolution workflow. Uh, and I'm actually just curious. Oh, so it does still leave the field comment here, which is interesting. Um, but in addition to that, uh, you'll see now we have this uh, feature here where we can open up a query. So we can either verify the data value, um, which this will become more apparent, or why we'd use this more apparent later, uh, or we can open up a query. So let's say maybe, actually, I'm going to change the field uh, maybe to something else. Uh, let's just maybe do education. So I would open up a query here. Let's say the, the education was like, it says 18 here, but maybe it was like 17 on a paper form, for example. So we could open up the query, and then we could assign it to whatever user is listed as the data entry person up here. Uh, again, this is another good reason why you want to have these metadata fields at the top. Uh, but I'm the only user in this project right now, so, or rather the only person that can respond to queries. So I'll just assign it to myself. And I'll say, uh, education does not match paper form and open the query. And you'll see now that not only does the little speech bubble become illuminated, but we also have this little red exclamation point um, indicating that there's an open query. So you can kind of just go through form by form and reviewing the data and open the queries like that. And once you're done with that, you can go over to the um, resolve issues link here. And uh, because it's just me uh, on this project, you'll only see myself as the assigned user. But if, for example, let's say you had a project with three data entry people, um, once you finish your data review, you could kind of just email them and say, you know, I've finished my review. And then they can go into the resolve issues link and filter for themselves. And then they've got a full list of uh, data quality queries that they need to respond to. So they can just click the link here, um, see what the issue is. So education does not match paper form. And then they can like click this little link here, you know, make the change. Uh, what's going to happen here? Is it going to ask me to? OK, so it's not going to force me to respond. So uh, we're going to want to go back here. 
and we could reply with one of these canned responses. Uh, so these are just kind of common um, issues here. So in this case, it would be a typo. Uh, and I will point out if if the dead entry person doesn't have closed the query rights. So as I mentioned, when we were looking at the user rights to give them the rights just to respond to queries, they wouldn't see this. They would just see the dropdown. Um, and then I think they're also forced to leave a comment here, so they can just say fixed. And once that uh, response has gone through, you'll see the red uh, exclamation point here turns blue. And then at this point, now the data auditor would come back in and review these resolved uh, audit findings. And they could make sure that everything looks uh, right here. So they can see it was previously 18, it's been changed to 17. And then the data auditor could close the query. And I think that I'm going to be forced yet to leave a comment. So you can just say, good. Uh, but you do have the option to send back for further attention. Um, and uh, and that's kind of really all there is to the workflow. Now, it obviously is a little more uh, cumbersome uh, and uh, involved than the field comment log. But it is a good workflow to have if you're doing kind of a, a more robust data analysis or if you're running like a clinical trial or something and you need to have that full audit history of any changes to the data. And I will say for all of the projects, the research projects that I build, I, I kind of do make pretty routine use of the data resolution workflow. I find it is kind of just a nice way to work. Um, also, it, it is handy because it does tie in now with the data quality rules here. So uh, in the previous example we just did, we were kind of looking form by form and uh, looking for uh, audit findings that way. But the way I actually prefer and normally work is through the data quality module here. And so the data quality module uh, is a way in RedCap to let you kind of scan all of your data at the same time to look for errors. So rather than having to go through form by form, which is pretty tedious, you can kind of just run these rules to find common issues. Um, so out of the box, RedCap comes with uh, eight predefined rules. And for me, I find the one that I really only use is B. And this is the find uh, missing values for required fields only. Uh, for just plain missing values, I find there's so many false positives here. Um, it's kind of defeats the purpose. But in fields marked required, uh, I've designed, or I usually try to design my forms in such a way that like, if there's a missing value here, it is a legitimately missing value and not just some kind of artifact of the form design. So um, we can give this, uh, we can run this rule and see what happens. And we can see here that there are two missing values that are marked required. And actually, just out of curiosity, let's see how many of this brings up. Yeah, so many more. Um, I remember I was actually doing this on a, one of our other research projects, and you know, the rule took maybe four or five minutes to run, and it ended up finding over 10,000 missing values. So obviously, at that point, things just become unwieldy. Uh, but two is very easy to deal with. So we can click View here, and we have it looks like record two and record three are missing data. So we can go in here and click the link to go into the data entry form to see what's happening. And uh, what did it say? It said diagnosis was missing. So yep, yeah, there's nothing entered here. And we can see that this form was marked complete. Um, and there's no note as to why the diagnosis is missing. So from a data management perspective, we kind of want to figure out what's going on here. So we'd go back to the data resolution workflow window, or the sorry, data quality window. And we could click this little resolve issues button. And we could open up our query right from here and assign it to whatever user entered the data and say, why is dx missing? And open the query accordingly. And then it would be just the same workflow as uh, previously when we were working through form by form. Um, so now let's take a look at record three here. Uh, again, we'll click this link to go into the record. And it says, OK, so we're missing the does participant wear a hearing aid or glasses. And so this isn't entered. But if we scroll to the top, we can see that the data entry person has marked this form as partial. And they put a note here that says they forgot to ask about the glasses. So this is like what I would consider an ideal workflow um, because we see the missing value, but we can immediately see why that value is missing, uh, which is great. So we can then go back to our data quality module here. We can open up this query, and we can actually just mark this as a verified data value. And when we do that, 
now I'm just going to refresh um, and we execute this value again or this rule again uh, you'll see that we only have one open issue because we have this one exclusion that we marked as verified which you can bring up at any time but it's just a nice way to like if you do have fields that you know are missing and there's a reason for it then this data quality module is not going to pick them up every time so it's a nice little feature to have um, the rest of these I find I don't really use all that much and even when I do most of the time they come up as zero um, but you may just want to go through them from time to time uh, to make sure that there's nothing weird going on uh, with outliers or field validation errors um, so in addition to the eight rules that REDCap has uh, it also allows you to program your own rules um, so we can give that a try and let's just use the example that they have down here so First, we want to give it a label, and actually, I'm just going to copy this exactly. Say participant was below age 18, and then we just put in the same kind of logic that we use everywhere in RedCap, so like our calculations and branching logic. Uh, in this case, we'll say demo underscore age uh, is less than 18, and we do have the option to execute in real time here. So in this case, if uh, if some if the data entry person tries to enter an age that's less than 18 they won't even be able to save the record um, but I'm just gonna leave that unchecked for now and I'll add this and then we can just execute this rule the same as anything else and you'll see this gives us one error which we can review and it looks like somehow uh, a seven-year-old was enrolled to our fictional study here so once again we would just open up the query um, assign it to whoever and say why is there a seven-year-old in this study um, perhaps you might want to leave a comment that's slightly less snarky, uh, snarky but uh, I think you get the idea here um, and yeah so you can kind of program as many different rules as you want and you can kind of be really simple kind of like this rule is or you can get really specific so or, or much more complex um, so, for example, in one of our studies, uh, I programmed a rule where um, if somebody scored really highly on a depression scale but did not have a diagnosis of de uh, depression from the skid, um, I would kind of compare those two values and then flag the person for further review. Um, <laughs> to be honest, it kind of gave more false positives than it was really useful, but uh, the proof of concept was there. Um, but generally what I'll do is go through and program all of the eligibility criteria into uh, these rules here. So, you know, every study has, you know, five or six eligibility criteria, and it's just a way to ensure that everybody that's going into the database is meeting those eligibility criteria. Um, what else? Do we have anything else here? I don't think so. I think that's it. So that does it for the field comment log and data resolution workflow and data quality module. Um, in the next video, we will be talking about the randomization module. So feel free to continue watching if you're interested in that. And otherwise, I will see you next time.